This is an IBM PC Junior, IBM's less than popular follow-up to the highly successful IBM PC. This computer was met with complaints about its high cost and low compatibility with existing PC software, but it received outright contempt over its original chiclet keyboard. Even this apologetic replacement keyboard I've got here isn't that great and not really a pleasure to type on. However, that's not the end of the hardware annoyances. Even though this is just an 8088 computer with an ISA bus and standard type peripherals, they chose to use proprietary connectors for almost everything. And let's not even get to the highly proprietary sidecar expansions. The video and audio ports are just about the only thing I would call standard, and you're not even really meant to use those, as it has a dedicated monitor port for the PC Junior monitor. Which brings me to my dilemma. I picked this computer up at a thrift store for a pretty good price, but this is everything I got with the computer. The computer itself, the second revision keyboard, and the keyboard cable that's not actually necessary because the keyboard can send and receive IR transmissions to the front of the computer. What I did not get is the external power supply. The PC Junior uses a proprietary external 18 volt AC power supply. Now, I could get one of these power supplies off eBay, but they sell for about $60. And since I don't actually know if this computer works, I'm not really that interested in buying one right now. So, what other options do I have? Well, I could try and find a less proprietary 18 volt power supply and see if I could get that working. It would need to be about 2.5 amps for me to be comfortable, but I'm not super fond of going that route. I could get a Variac that would let me adjust the AC voltage anywhere from zero to what I get on mains, but those are even more expensive, and I don't really want to buy one of those right now. However, I do have one more idea. If we pull the top off the case, we can see that the PC Junior was pretty conveniently designed with a lot of cards for parts of the computer, including the power supply. Now, since this is just an 8088 based computer, it's pretty safe to assume this is a fairly typical type power supply. It will take in 18 volts AC and convert that to 12, 5, and probably negative 12 volts DC. We can see that it even has a standard Molex power connector going all the way over to the floppy drive, and a standard fan header that goes to a fan behind the floppy drive. Taking an even closer look at it, we can see that this big TO3 pack here is just a 7812, so we know that's a 12 volt regulator. And I've actually traced out some of these connectors. These two here are ground, this one in the middle is 5, and I had a very difficult time trying to figure out what that pin is on the left. I had a feeling it was going to be negative 12 volts, but I wanted to be sure, so I tracked down the original schematics for the power board. And after looking through it, we can be sure that it is indeed negative 12. We can also pretty easily verify everything but the negative 12 volts on the schematic by just beeping out the connectors on the Molex power for the floppy drive. So, great, I know what all the voltages are. What good does that do me? Well, those particular voltages are very easy to get out of an ATX power supply. And from here you can pretty much see where I'm going with this. Now to really do this right, I'm gonna need a connector to put that into. So I went up into my attic and grabbed a uh, donor board that I can pull the power connector off of and uh, create my own circuit board to put it on. All right, now let's go ahead and take this thing off and in case anyone cares, there's no redeeming qualities about this motherboard. It just came out of some old boring compact, and I'm pretty sure it had a cellar on in it. It's really nothing to be excited about. So, uh, I don't have any problems taking it apart for just that connector. And So, uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, that is the 24-pin ATX Molex power connector removed from the motherboard. Now I just need to start designing a power board replacement that I can plug into the PC Junior that uses this as the source for all of the voltages it needs. Now I want to get this working today, so I'm not going to wait for PCBs to be delivered. I'm going to design this and then cut it out of this single side copper clad I have. Now unfortunately I don't have an acid that I can etch this with or a laser I can cut it, so I'm just going to have to use a box cutter and score it and scrape off the copper that I don't need, but I should be able to get something functional today. After I prove this works, I'm going to do a board order and get some real parts in for this. 
All right, now before I get designing the board that I'm going to put that connector on to interface with the PC Junior, I need to know a couple things first. So here I have the mechanical dimensions of the Molex connector, so I can figure out what the pin spacing is here, for example, which is 4.2 millimeters, and I can figure out what exactly I'm going to need to design around. Next, I need to know what the pinout is, so we can go to Wikipedia for that, and we can see we'll have pretty much everything we need on one side, with the exception of 12 volts positive. Now, these four pins down here are for the 28 pin connectors, and we're not going to be using that. So we're only going to have the one 12 volt pin on here, which does make me somewhat concerned that it's not going to be able to deliver enough power. However, um, looking up the 7812 regulator that's on the existing power board, which is the 33 watt model, I can find that that regulator can either do 1 amp or 1.5 amps. And I'm pretty sure both of those would easily be doable by the ATX power supply over that one cable. Next, for the final design, I actually need this to be right angle, because if it's sticking straight up, the cable's either going to go into the side of the case or into the uh, RAM module to the right. So I'm going to have to use a right angle connector, which I don't have, so that's annoying. But uh, I'm going to design it with this in mind, and then just make do with what I have now. So I'm going to have to run some wires down and hope for the best. All right, so time to get started on the layout. Mmm, looking good. Try the Molex connector. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to do a fitment test with the printout of the PCB, and I've gone ahead and slid the uh, Molex connector in there just to make sure that looks good. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Tips over because paper obviously can't really support itself compared to printed circuit board, but... I'd say that's holding up pretty good, and it fits well, and it looks right. So, uh, yeah, I think it's time to take this to the next step. All right, now, the next thing I'm going to do is use the copper clad board I have. Again, this is single side, so this is tricky. I've cut out one of my little printout tests, and I'm going to be adhering this to here, and that'll allow me to know where I need to drill all of the points on this. I am going to have to drill this to be able to get the Molex connector to properly stick to it. So, uh, that won't really be that fun, but it's got to be done. All right. I now have all the holes drilled in the board I need. I'm, I am going to try and mount the uh, connector like that to see how it uh, works out in here. And that mounts pretty solidly, especially if I give it some space. And it it's, it's really good in there. So... That's going to work out well, but I don't want that in there quite yet, because I need to get traces on here. Now, um, yeah, I'm not going to do this in, like, the best way. I'm just going to use a knife and cut it, but I have a lot of blades to go through, so, yeah, see how that goes. Now, uh, time to start cutting. Okay, progress update, because the camera can only record for 10 minutes, and I can't pay attention to when it stops. So, um, continuity test here. These are all isolated. So, we're looking good. 
I still need to isolate the remaining unused um, pins on the ATX connector up here, and I need to get this one all the way to over here, which is going to be just fun. But, uh, yep, getting closer. So, uh, let's continue. Bam! There we go. Hopefully that will work. All right, and now for a test fit. Ooh, that's looking good. So you may have noticed that I am just sticking the connector on like that, and for the time being, that's really the only option I have. And looks like I do have enough space to be able to jam my ATX connector in there. So for the final one, I'm going to come in from the top, but for now, this will work out well enough. All right, because uh, camera hates me, it stopped recording. Um, but I've got everything on here and uh, tinned up pretty good. Hopefully you caught the part where I was uh, bending the pins of the ATX connector to make it mount flat, which worked out very well. I'm gonna solder on this switch to the uh, power on and uh, we can then read the voltages off of here to make sure it looks good. Hey, uh, one more thing I should verify before plugging in the power supply. <phone rings> Seems good. All right, well, I'm getting set up here. The power supply is in the off position, and when I plug this in, I can hear a relay click. Uh, of course, now it's not doing it. Well, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's find out. I've already re-verified there's no shorts, so we'll see. Although I guess I haven't verified between the uh, pins poking through. You know what? I'll do that first. You know what? There's too many permutations. Let's just find out. See what happens. <clears throat> the fan won't turn on, probably. So, we'll see. Yeah, no fan. Okay. Voltage time. So. Ground. Uh, nothing. Okay, that's very alarming. Round. That should be 5. That should be 12. That should be negative. Well, let's uh, knock that off. Hey, you, you know what would be really funny? Is if you went through all this work, looking at this, wiring up a circuit board, laying out the circuit, building a circuit board from scratch using a knife and copper clad, and, uh, and, and, and you didn't notice that the pin out here represents the cable, not the connector. That would be really funny, wouldn't it? Ha 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 ha. All right, compare that. The original for scale, and it's perfect. Okay. Okay, so let me beep everything out and then I'll go ahead and uh, join the two ground planes. Uh, looks like my camera's going to want to break here. All right, all looks good. Give the camera a rest while I uh, finish this up. All right, let's go ahead and plug this in and find out if it works correctly. So, 
Right, so that connected. Power supply on. Oh, that's a good sign. Okay, uh, let me see the voltages. Five's looking good. Twelve's looking good. Negative twelve's looking good. Awesome! Uh, I think I'm ready to try powering up PC Junior. All right, let's try putting this in. Uh, there's a, a lot more wiggle room in this handmade board than the last one. Uh, but it does align well enough, so I'll just be careful with that. All right, I'm going to power the fan with a uh, separate header, just connects to Molex. And I will also have to separately power the floppy drive. Uh, yeah, I think I'm ready to plug it in and find out. My composite color monitor is not easy to get to right now, so I'm just going to use this. So, uh, let's find out. You know what? Let's turn on the power supply. Alright. That doesn't look good. That was off. Power supply is clicking like crazy. Ugh. What is going on? Okay, this is really weird. Um, I don't think it's my wiring. I think it might be my copper clad. If I go from one isolated pad to another, yeah, that's really low resistance for something that should be completely isolated. I mean, that's, that's a more reasonable value there that's just an example i mean all of them on here are really bad and well i i, I how do you get a negative resistance and i can i can flip the the uh probes and how does that work but these should be considerably higher than that so maybe my ghetto etching didn't work out that well let me Okay, so here's a frame of reference. Here's my copper clad board, okay? Measure between those two points and I get a negative resistance, whatever that means. I don't know, that's stupid. But if I take this piece of FR4 here from just something, and I've what I've done is I've isolated two parts of the ground plane, and if I try and measure between those, hey, I get nothing because that's what I should get because they're isolated. Now, these are all supposed to be isolated. I don't understand. It's the same thing on here. Let me just zoom in. Okay, so here you can see this pad of copper is completely isolated. There is nothing touching it, okay? I've completely scraped it away. And if, you know, touch on that, okay, touch right beside it, okay, to the next one over, let's try and... There we go. 40K. What? How is that possible? Okay, here I have a piece of copper clad that I just cut off the sheet. Okay, let me show you. The probes are working. Okay, if I try to take a measurement, I get nothing. I can press really hard. Nothing. Okay, so I am going to clamp onto this on both sides. Okay, still nothing. All right, for a test, let's do a uh, diode. There we go. So you can see it's fully connected. Okay. Flux pen. Over there. Fine. Over there. Fine. In the middle. Boom. That's probably getting under the copper, and I can't clean it out. <laughs> so, this just can't work now. I would have to remake it for a third time. You know what? Let's call this part one. Um... <laughs> and say I'm, there'll be a follow-up here because I have to get this replaced with an actual two-layer circuit board so I don't have this problem. <laughs> this is really frustrating. <laughs> but, oh well, that's what I need to do. Well, I'll see you guys later. All right, I couldn't leave well enough alone. This is about four hours later than uh, the last shot you saw. 
and I was thinking that maybe the um, power on signal on here was being pulled high again or intermittent um, because of the voltage being able to bleed across the resistance in the traces on here. So I plugged this in, was starting to do some testing, doing some voltage measurements, and everything seemed perfectly fine. I couldn't get it to fail. So I started doing some tests and uh, it's all better now for the most part. Remember, I did actually clean that. So that's why that one looks so good. And this is the test one. Again, this is about four hours later. I have not cleaned this. If I measure in the good copper area, we can see that it's up to one meg now. So it looks like the flux is able to evaporate or permeate into the FR4 and get away from the copper. I'm not really sure, but and since the resistance problem is gone, it works now. And there we go. That is a PC Junior running off of an ATX power supply. All right, so here we go. An IBM PC Junior running off of an ATX power supply. I've fully replaced the original internal power board with just a really simple little adapter. Now I've done a proper professional board order for these and I'll be getting those in in a week or two, I'm not really sure. And I'm going to be ordering some of those right angle Molex connectors I'd originally shown. So I can try and make some of these that are a little bit better done. I'm also going to go ahead and order some power switches. In the back I'm going to be swapping the original power cable input and the power switch. Because the ATX power cable needs to drape out. And the power switch actually has a cutout at the top of the case. So that works a little better. So um, I'm going to have this set up to where it works pretty much the same. But you just uses an ATX power supply. Now I'm going to be ordering enough parts to make at least 10 of these initially, so I may be um, trying to get these to other people in the future. We'll find out. But for now, that's everything I wanted to cover with this, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the process. I'll see you next time.